And welcome back to the Monday Overreaction Show. It's your main man, Amra Richardson, here with Jason Sukamel, who is filling in for catch. Much more handsome uh, person to have on the, on our Pretty low bar, podcast. but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on our podcast. And I want to thank you guys for listening as we close in on our Christmas week. As you can see, I'm being very festive uh, right now. So uh, we're going to have make sure we have videos for you all week long. So when you're preparing for Christmas, or you're in the midst of Hanukkah, or getting ready for Kwanzaa, or you don't give a damn about the holidays, no matter what, we're hoping that you have a fantastic week. And uh, make sure you also know that the uh, this show is brought to you by Rogue Apothecary. Speaking of the holidays, Jason, you know, I'm just trying to think if you got the family coming and the in-laws <laughs> coming and the friends coming, no better time than to stock up on some Rogue Apothecary CBDs to get through the holidays. You're a beer guy, but... Hey, when it comes to in- in-laws, I'll take whatever works, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got my mom flying in on Wednesday, so I might need to hit up my guy, Richard. Do me a favor. Before we get into anything, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I was subscribed to get all the notifications, likes, because I think it does something with an algorithm, and we like that as well. So, Jason, a couple of things happened. You're supposed, we're supposed to have an a, a, a offseason that's not so busy, but yet it seems like we're always doing something all the time. Over the weekend... Texas kind of finds a way to replace, I say kind of, they found a way to replace Stan Drayton. Uh, Stan Drayton takes that job over at Temple, becomes the head coach over there. I had an emotional press conference uh, that's available on YouTube for those um, that want to see it. And then, Jason, we were kind of wondering, who do you find to replace a guy like Stan Drayton, who we feel, I think you and I would agree, was a kind of a valuable asset uh, here at Texas for the last couple of years. They hired Tashard Choice. Um, he is a guy that's, you know, obviously former NFL player. Everyone's kind of familiar with his NFL background, especially at all the time they spent with the Cowboys. Starts off, I think, in his college, his coaching career in Dallas for a little bit. Then goes to North Texas. Uh, spent some time over in Georgia Tech for a few years. Uh, got hired at USC and was there for about three days or something like that. And he put himself in a transfer portal and he comes to Texas. Jason, I'm just kind of curious. Your, your your instant reaction or impressions of them hiring uh, Tashar Choice? Well, um, my instant reaction is that I love the hire. And, and you and I, we've talked about this on our podcast, where we both have a ton of respect for Stan Drayton and what he's done as a coach. You know, rec- recruiter, he's had some hits and misses there. But just as a person, more than anything, I want to say that first. People I've talked to that know him and people have played for him just rave about, hey, you're not going to find a better person than Stan Drayton. So it's a big loss there uh, in developing these young men in, in, in the locker room. But um, a little background, man, on the Tashard Choice, that was Saturday. Yes, yeah, so Saturday mm-hmm. at like noon. I'm in Walmart buying a bunch of shit for my daughter. Do- my daughter had like eight girls coming over for a Christmas party, uh-huh. 10-year-old daughter, mind you. So I had eight 10-year-olds in my house set for that afternoon. Oh, and I get a call from somebody, and I haven't talked to this dude in forever, and I'm so I pick up the phone and he goes, Hey, I got some scoop for you. And I'm like, all right, I'll take it Saturday afternoon scooping while I'm in Walmart. And, what you got <laughs> yeah. and he goes, yeah, I think it is a Georgia tech source. And he mentions to shard choice. And I think he's coming to Texas and blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of a done deal. And I'm like, Whoa, I was not expecting that call mm-hmm. out of the blue. Um, and I started talking to this person about to shard choice. And he's like, man, he's an amazing ACE recruiter was the word he kept using and just a really cool person and he really relates well to these kids he's you know still fairly young um and then i called catch and catch put on the board and catch gets all the glory for it's <laughs> how <laughs> <laughs> the sausage is made at orange bloods by yeah, the way exactly. dude, hey, i'm just glad we had it out there before anybody yeah. else. um but in talking to people who cover georgia tech a couple of them and i'm gonna i, I want to go in more into this throughout the week maybe for the war room or on orange bloods later in the week but um yeah, people have just raved about his abilities as a uh, as a coach, but more so as a recruiter. And I think for Stan Drayton, he's a little bit different than Stan. I think Stan was more known and more valued for his coaching ability, and, and I mentioned for his character and his ability to develop these guys away from the field and on the field as a coach. I wouldn't necessarily have called Stan Drayton a recruiting shark he plus recruiter he obviously got Bijan robinson he got jonathan brooks i mean he's done pretty well as a recruiter uh Jaden blue this year 
but he wasn't what I would consider a home run hire or home run person as a home run hitter, as a recruiter. I think Tashar Choice is that kind of recruiter. And that's what you need, man. And we'll talk about wide receiver here in a little bit. But I've always thought and said your running backs coach, uh, your wide receivers coach, and probably your tight ends coach, those dudes need to be badass recruiters. They've got to be among the best of the best. They've got to be the guys that can go out and recruit elite talent, not just at their position, maybe help at some other positions. Texas now has that, I think, at the running back position. They've got Jeff Banks, known as an elite recruiter at the tight end position. We'll see what happens at the wide receiver position. But, uh, yeah. yeah, my initial reaction when I first heard the news, I was like, whoa, that's – frankly, that was a name I hadn't heard in a while. It's a sharp choice. Like you yeah. mentioned, I knew him from the Cowboys. I didn't even know he was at Georgia Tech and had gone to USC, if I was being completely honest, until the dude who called me kind of started telling me how all this came together. Um mm-hmm. But the more I heard about it, the more people I talked to, I, I love the hire. I think it's, it's, I think, excuse me, I think it's exactly what Texas needs, a young, aggressive recruiter that can go out and pull in top mm-hmm. talent, not just a running back. Maybe, like I said, he can help out in other positions as well. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I'll defend Stan Drayton just a little bit as he <laughs> cannot defend himself as he's probably busy figuring out how to recruit at Temple. Um, <laughs> He did, he, he, did, he did recruit Keontae Ingram, who was the number one running back in the state of Texas. That was that a year. slam dunk for Texas. Keontae uh, was coming if I was the running so back. It's a so. slam dunk. It's a slam dunk until you miss it, right? Well, and, then, yeah. and then, and then you know, so I'll give him credit for that. Um, I also would give him, you know, and I know you talked a little bit about recruiting and also from a coaching perspective, I, I will add in, there was that transition for Roshan Johnson, you know, from quarterback to running back, who Roshan ends up being a pretty serviceable uh, running back, he oh, looks yeah. like an NFL running back, probably. Yeah, he. I think he's a guy. Roshan is a guy to me that is going to have a long career in the NFL. He may not be a starter, but he's a guy that uh, you know, knock on wood, knows how to handle the rock. Very solid, uh, north south guy. I think he's a guy that has a long NFL career ahead of him. So I think you know, I'll give him credit on that. But I get what you're saying. Uh, when you start talking about the emphasis on recruiting and what they're wanting. And when you think of like the Ruben Owens, right. Who's hanging out there and how do you reel that guy back in, you know, you, you, you run the risk of losing a guy like Ruben. If you don't have a ace, you know, hire some for someone to frame to look at and say, Oh, okay. I, I don't mind being with that guy for the next few years. You know, I've talked to people since Tashard was, was hired uh, Jason and to your point, everybody praised him. I've talked to guys across the country. Uh, they're like, that guy is a really, really, really good dude. And yeah, Lincoln Riley wouldn't praise him if he. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, but you know what? Lincoln can't say anything <laughs> after just leaving his job and leaving OU and not being there for the bowl game. Like, it's the last guy <laughs> that can talk about anybody just saying, you know what? You should have fulfilled your obligations. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody else might be able to say that, Lincoln. I don't know if you're the guy right now, but uh, but yeah, Jason. So I I, I definitely like uh, the hire. And you know what's interesting to me, Jason, as I think about a guy like Tashar Choice, and I've been thinking about this this week, and I want to kind of get your feedback on it. It seems to me that I feel like one of Steve Sarkeesian's biggest kind of victories this off season has been able to sell people the dream and the vision of what he wants his program, where he wants his program to be. You cover this, Jason, from a recruiting perspective. We talked about this before. Having five wins and being five and seven and not going to a bowl game is usually not the recipe for a success. <laughs> like, it just – it usually means guys take a wait-and-see approach. But yet, he was still able to get the elite guys to buy in, to believe that, okay, this is going to be something special down the line. It's a short choice. He was just at USC. I mean, I mean, he was only there for a couple of days. I mean, he didn't have a chance to even get uh, his legal card uh, so he can go get some some of the products that are out there, right? He didn't even have a chance to file. And but yet, here he is. You know, it's like Steve Sarkeesian comes calling, and he's like, "Okay, I'll, I'll be there because I believe in what you're doing." I mean, it, am I wrong? Do you would you agree with that assessment that there, that Sarkeesian is successfully selling where he believes his program is going to be in the future? Yeah, well, he's selling a vision and a um, couple things on choice. Um, I was told that Texas was his dream job. And you hear that about a lot of people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he also wants to be a head football coach. 
he views mm -hmm. Texas as a great platform to do that. Listen, it worked for Sam Drayton, right? Sure. So uh, he comes here, and if Texas is successful under Sark for two or three years, maybe he gets uh, that dream comes true for Tashar Choice. But um, it's pretty incredible, Omar, we're talking about selling this vision that Sark's doing a tremendous job of. Last year, going back like to last summer, where we're talking about recruiting, um, I remember Catch and I and probably all of us on the modcast were saying, all these recruits are taking a wait, wait and see approach with Steve Sarkeesian, right? Mm -hmm. He wasn't getting maybe the bump that Tom Herman and Charlie Strong got because these recruits were like, hey, man, I've seen that with Texas before and it didn't work out. So I need to see it with Sark before I'm going to buy in. And there was a pretty, pretty big lull in recruiting there late in the summer where Texas wasn't able to land guys. So they wanted to see progress on the field. Well, then Texas goes out and goes five and seven, mm -hmm. right? But yet still guys are buying in, man. It's, yeah. And I, I understand why. Listen, I, I still think Sark is going to do a great job at Texas, but that's a hard sell when guys are saying, all right, dude, love what you're preaching, but I need to see it on the field. I need to see progress. And then, then we'll talk some more. And then you go five and seven, and guys, guys are <laughs> believing in the vision that you're, you're selling. So it's pretty remarkable how some of this came together. Um, I think Lincoln Riley leaving obviously helped. I mean, let's be honest, uh, Mario Cristobal leaving Oregon helped Texas get a couple key offensive line pieces there, uh, coaching shakeups at, at LSU. So, you know, some dominoes kind of fell in Texas's favor, but I think you're absolutely right that he's selling a vision and guys, including co these coaches, are buying in which is pretty remarkable after going five and seven, you can sell, mm -hmm. you can sell progress and you can sell, yeah. Hey, we're going to compete for championships. That, that video that was on, uh, I think it was Instagram live that Derek Brown did when, when they had all the recruits in and Sark was talking and Sark's like, we are going to win national championships. Uh, the first one's the toughest and we're going to stack more on top of that. We want you to be a part of it. And guys are buying into that dream. They're buying into that vision mm -hmm. coming off of a five and seven season. So, Hey man, that's a hell of a recruiting job. Yeah. by Steve Sarkeesian, right? So a little bit more on, on choice and, and kind of you, you talked about recruiting and I know you don't have it up in front of you, but I want to ask you about the, some of the guys in the 2023 class that he would be targeting some of the running backs there. Yeah. If you need to pull yeah. it up, I'll fill a buster for a second. <laughs> I'm curious, Jason, who are some of the guys I mentioned Ruben Owens. Yeah. And when you start thinking about the top guys that you say, okay, to shard, Okay, these are going to be the guys that Texas needs to be in the mix for, that Texas needs to be a player for. Obviously, we're going to start thinking inside the state of Texas before we start talking outside the state of Texas. But I'm kind of curious, Jason, your hit list, your, your big targets for 2023, who do guys you say, okay, and, and you can start with Ruben Owens, uh, who are the guys that you say, all right, Tashard, these are the guys that you got to go get. Yeah, Ruben Owens would be your, your first one, obviously. Uh you know, top rated running back in the country. You mentioned he was a one-time Texas commitment. So that's, you know, I, I, in fact, I probably should hit up Ruben. I would be surprised if he hasn't heard from Tashard Choice already. Um, there's a young man I wrote about him this morning named Javen Simpkins. Uh, he's out of Florida, it's the Miami area. He was committed to Georgia Tech. He decommitted uh, when Tashard Choice left. I was texting with him last night and this morning. He said, hey, I'm absolutely uh, interested in, he already had a Texas offer from Stan Drayton. Mm -hmm. So he said, Hey, I already had that offer, but uh, now at the shard there, uh, I'm extremely interested. So, um, you know, I'm looking at the, knowing what I know about to shard choice. I mean, I think he'll go after the elite of the elites and I'm looking at their offer list, Texas's offer list. They haven't offered a ton of guys. Um, one other one that I'll meet in the 2023 class, Ruben Owens, we all know about, um, Justice Haynes is a running back out of Georgia. Most people have him pegged to go to Georgia. Um, but I was told yesterday, yeah, I think it was yesterday, maybe Saturday, I guess it was, hey, you need that I need to have an eye on Justice Haynes because hmm. Texas will be in the mix. Um, he's okay. the number 16 player in the entire country. Um, number 16 overall recruit in the entire country. So um, I think Texas will – swing for the fences. I think they'll recruit nationally under Tashard Choice based on what I know and what I've heard. But still, anytime you have an in-state guy, that's going to be your top priority. Ruben Owens is probably going to be the, the first guy that that would probably the first call he makes if he hasn't made it already. <laughs> okay. So, all right, Jason, I want to transition a little bit out of Tashard Choice. You talk about one guy going, there's another guy that's leaving. 
um, mm. which it seems like Andre Coleman is no longer a part of the Texas staff. We talked about little things as recruiting uh, is relates to Andre Coleman. Not a huge surprise, I would say, uh, to either one of us. I think you and I have kind of been on the forefront of saying, all right, you know, if, if, if there's a change that needs to be made in the offseason, the receivers coach is probably the, the top choice that, that, that it needs to happen for many reasons. Uh, from a recruiting perspective, probably in there is one of the top ones. I've missed out a lot of guys in, in the 2022 cycle and really missed out guys in, in 2021 when we really think mm -hmm. about it. So it's like two years where it's kind of been a little bit of a struggle from a recruiting perspective. Um, Jason, we don't have to really shit on Andre Coleman, but I'm yeah. curious. You know, but I'm just curious as, you know, your thoughts on the decision, uh, you know, for that departure. Then we can start talking about some of the guys that we're hearing as, you know, potential replacements. Yeah, like you said, you don't want to crap on a guy who's – I mean, it's the dirty part of the job. You hate hearing about anybody losing their job, okay? But um, if I'm being completely honest, I mean, when Sark kept Andre Coleman from the previous staff, that was surprising to me um, just because of his – recruiting struggles. Um, there's, I mean, frankly, I remember talking to someone about this and I said, Hey, if there's one coach that I wouldn't have retained, it would have been Andre Coleman. And we've seen that kind of come to fruition. I mean, you mentioned uh, this year, they got two receivers. That's only because they went out and got Savion red late uh, the year before in 2021, they had, well, they took four, but Keith Ron Lee's already out of the program. Xavier worthy was a late addition because of Steve Sarkeesian. Um, they just had a lot, a lot of misses, man. I mean, they lost Evan Stewart this year. This was a no brainer decision to me that Steve Sarkeesian had to make. Um, you know, I keep hearing, Hey, Andre Coleman's going to maybe find a soft landing spot. So I mentioned maybe K-State, maybe he goes back to K-State and, and I hope so. I hope it works out for him, whatever, whatever he ends up doing, obviously. Um, but it was a change yeah, that needed to be made. Um, again, like the running back position. Texas needs to go out and hire someone who's a dynamic recruiter, maybe somebody with ties to the state of Texas. Um, you know, I like young coaches who can relate well. Receiver and running back, I mean, this receiver more so than running back, but at running back on our, mm. you got to be able to coach them up, okay, a little bit, but either no, you're either a good running back or you're not for the most part, okay? I mean, you got to coach them up on blocking, and, but hey, you see a hole, you run through it, right? Um, receiver, it's a little more technical with your footwork and routes and this, that, and the other, but um, the, I, I said it earlier, I mean, tight end, running back, receiver, those guys have to be your ace recruiters on offense. And Andre Coleman, for being honest, was the weakest link of this Texas staff in terms of being a, in terms of recruiting. So I think it was a necessary change. It's a nasty part of the business. You hate it. I don't know Andre Coleman. I've talked to people who know him well and like, dude, it sucks. Andre Coleman's an amazing guy, but it just wasn't the right fit at Texas. Maybe if he winds up at a place like K-State again you know, maybe you can flourish there and best of luck to him. Yeah, I would say the same. And like you said, it's it's tough, you know, but this, was, this recruiting cycle was tough. And it's tough when you have guys who were committed, uh, elite guys, and then just not wanting to be a part of the program. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a tough thing. It's a, it's a blow and it's a blow to that, you know, that receiver room where, you like you said, if, if Steve Sarkeesian doesn't have that connection with Xavier Worthy, what mm -hmm. does that receiver room look like in 2021? I mean, five and seven might have been three and nine. Even. Correct, correct. And even with that five and seven, the one thing that I saw uh, throughout the year, uh, I was about to call you Cash. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so used to it. <laughs> used to it. Uh, the one thing, Jason, though, is there was a lot of drops. Like I don't, I don't mm. have the number, but it just seemed like there were a lot more drops this past season than we've noticed before. Um, and so, you know, you, you've got you've got Xavier Worthy that, that comes back. You got to hope that Troy Amiri is can stay healthy. You got to hope, hope that Jordan Whittington can stay healthy. And, you know, you can start with a good nucleus uh, from there. And then you talked about the incoming freshman. A name that we, we've heard over the weekend, Jason, I believe you've heard uh, as well. Uh, Brennan Marion, uh, mm -hmm. receivers coach out of Pittsburgh. He's a guy that, you know, look. I'm not going to profess to say I know every position coach in the country. Like that's, just, that's not my job description. So some people are going to say, well, how the hell do you not know who that guy is? Like, well, how, why the hell would I know him? And why should I know him? And you know, that's why should he be on my radar? But when you start looking up and, and again, we'll talk about maybe a couple of other guys that, that could be in the mix, but he seems to be the hot name at this moment. A lot of success at Pittsburgh gets a guy that's a Belitnikoff winner out there. 
it seems like if if you're going to check a box, that guy would be the the ultimate box to check to bring him in. Your thoughts on 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 Marion or any other guys that you know you think might be in the mix? Yeah, that name's pretty fresh to me. I saw it in your report this morning or I guess last night. I think. Um, mm, definitely. Yeah. Um, what I know of him, and I don't know a lot. I mean, like you, I mean, I don't know every assistant coach in the country. Okay, but um, uh, what I know of him is that he, again, he's known as a bulldog of a recruiter. I don't think he has any ties to the state of Texas, right, Omar? Does no, he? that's my knowledge. So. No. Yeah, so that you know that, that might take him a little bit of time to kind of get the lay of the land. But listen, man, you're at the University of Texas. That's going to open doors for you. I don't care if you're from Mars, and um, you know, being from UT is going to open high school doors for you. And with the trainer. Um, I think he'd be a great hire based on what I know about him. I want to talk to some more people today and this week and kind of get a better feel for what they know about him in the background. You know, I've seen people mention uh, Malcolm Kelly, who is the wide receiver coach at TC is the wide receiver coach at TCU. You know, Texas tried to make a run at Malcolm Kelly uh, a couple of years ago and it, it didn't hit, but you know, TCU is in transition. So maybe it does now. Um, I, I'll tell you this. I don't know who the hire is going to be. I think uh, Brendan Marion makes a lot of sense. But I've had literally, Omar, I've had co- college coaches calling me inquiring about this mm-hmm. job. Hey, man, do you think yeah. I have a shot? Uh, yeah. What's the status there? What's the word on Coleman? And I do like the idea of having someone, the only thing that Brandon Marion wouldn't bring, having someone that has connections in the state, okay? that I mean, wide receiver position as much as any other and probably DB, you've got to not just recruit the kid, obviously his parents, his high school coach, there's a lot of really good wide receiver trainers in the Dallas area, Houston mm-hmm. area too, but in the Dallas area, you got a, several of them are big name guys who are very influential. Hey, if you had somebody who had those guys, you know, in their pocket, so to speak, or had relationships with those trainers, that's important. I don't know that Brandon Marion does. Maybe he does, and I don't know about it. it would seem a little odd being from Pittsburgh, but, uh, you know, he's going to have to develop those relationships pretty quickly yeah. if he ends up being the guy. Yeah, and then, like the one of the things I think of, obviously, honestly – over the last several years when the receiver position comes up or there was a question, um, I always think of Rashad Samples. I mean, mm. to me, he's always kind of just the natural guy because he was here at UT, right? So get, he was here at one point. He's got the Texas root, roots. His dad is a legendary coach. They just played in another state championship game over the weekend. He's got the connections all throughout the state. And yes, he just got the TCU job, um, but you know, look, if Texas wants to flex, they can flex. I mean, we just saw what happened with the Shard Choice. The Shard Choice literally could, could not have unpacked all his boxes, even if he had been to the office yet. He may not even had a desk at this point. Definitely didn't have any business cards, um, which, by the way, those he can give those out or put them in a fire uh, for the, uh, the winters here in, in Texas. But I always think of Rashad Samples as a guy that... He'd be a great choice, yeah. Yeah, you know, that if, if Sarkeesian was just looking for, hey... Get this guy that checks a lot of the boxes and as the state connections that I was talking about, yeah, all that that you're talking about to me, Rashad Samples is the no brainer if he wants to go in that direction. Okay, Jason, I know you only got a couple of minutes left. We'll do we're gonna do a little bit shorter version of the overreaction Monday because, like, man, it's the holiday season. He's got a, a room, a, a bunch of kids in this in this house. I've got to finish some of my holiday shopping, so. I got it. This part of my overreaction. Okay. And this is going to be my big overreaction for today. Okay. Ethan Burke is a bad, bad man. He's a badass. I mean, look, you know, I went to like, I don't really know a bunch of like assistant coaches, right? I don't watch a bunch of high school games. Why should I? Like, I have things to do on a Friday night if I have a free Friday night. And the last thing I'm thinking about is watching. Uh, you know, any high school games, unless I know my fa- family members associated with or close friend, I'll go out and th- see them. So I got to watch the state championship game on Saturday. Obviously, Westlake goes and, and wins another state championship. Shout out to uh, Coach Dodge for going out on top. But Jason, give me some more on Ethan Burke because I mean, I knew he was good. His auto highlights looked good. I, you know, he was really impressive. But to see it live in real time on the biggest stage, that was impressive. Ethan Burke's amazing, and so is Colton Vosick, the other lineman for Westlake. I think he got defensive MVP. They need to give Colton Vosick, Texas needs to give Colton Vosick a scholarship offer like today and get 
you know what? They might as well just recruit that whole Westlake defensive line, man. Those guys <laughs> are amazing. But uh, um, Ethan Burke, man, it, I didn't really kn- know Ethan Burke until about a week ago. Um, someone had mentioned to me, oh, did you hear about this lacrosse kid going to Michigan? Uh, no, not really. It wasn't really on my radar because Texas wasn't recruiting him. But um, it was mon- – signing day was Wednesday. I think it was Monday night maybe a week ago. Or no, I think it was Tuesday. I don't know, Monday or Tuesday of last week. Um, catch to you know to his credit he got word about Texas and Ethan Burke um, heating up so I called Ethan Burke and this is why one reason I like Ethan Burke I kind of caught him off guard kind of cold called him I said hey Ethan I'm here in Texas is making a run at you you know can can I get a couple comments from you blah 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 he he, he's kind of flustered he goes oh uh -uh, well now I don't want to talk he goes you know I'll call you back in an hour Click. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm never hearing back from that. <laughs> <laughs> but about an hour later, he called me back and he goes, Hey, uh, okay, it's true. I just had to tell the Michigan coaches, let's talk. And he gave me quotes. So I had co- commitment quotes and everything. That was Tuesday night, I guess, because he announced on Wednesday morning uh, signing day. So uh, he actually called me back. So Ethan Burke, hey, you're, you're okay in my, in my book. All, you know, it's, all it takes is for Jason to give you that stamp of approval is return his phone call. Apparently. Right. Show me, show the bar is so low. Uh, a little respect. Uh, and he and I were talking, man, he's a former lacrosse, still plays lacrosse, six foot seven lacrosse player, yeah. had a scholarship to play at Maryland. Okay. That tells mm-hmm. me he's a badass lacrosse player. Yeah. And look, my daughter plays, I was talking to him. I have a daughter who's a sophomore in high school. She plays lacrosse and lacrosse, man, you gotta be a pretty good athlete to play the position he plays, Ethan Burke. Um, he's like an attack guy, you know, he's not, but anyways, um, we were talking a lot about lacrosse and like, he's, he goes, Hey man, anytime you want to talk lacrosse, he goes, you call me up. Cause I was like, dude, my daughter plays lacrosse. And I go, I don't even know the rules of lacrosse. <laughs> so like, lacrosse, I don't know, but uh, you know, he's fairly new to the state of Texas. He grew up in, I think it was Baltimore. Then he was in California. And I was thinking, you know, comes to Westlake and, Six foot seven, man. You saw it in the state championship game. This dude can move. And yes. I watched him in that game. And like his, you think of a guy six foot seven, you think, okay, he's probably going to be pretty stiff. He's not, man. He bends so well with his hips and just sinks down and is able to kind of cut that edge. I mean, I'm really intrigued by Ethan Burke. Rivals has him as a three star guy, six, seven, 230 pounds. I mean, as this frame fills out all morning, he gets up to 250, 275, whatever they want to get him to. This kid, I think, has a lot, a lot of potential. Um, he's a little bit unheralded right now, but his ceiling, if we're talking about what he could project to become, mm-hmm. it's right up there with anybody they sign, man. Now, will, yeah. will he be able to tap into that, all that, and, and use all, um, tap into all that, uh, the resources and, and everything else that mm-hmm. Texas has to offer him? Um, you know, time will tell, but yeah. Sure as hell looked good in that state championship game, didn't he? He was a badass, man. I mean, he was everywhere. It's not the first time, right? I mean, he was, you know, he's, it's, he's had performances like this. But, again, the biggest stage, I mean, it was it was impressive seeing him on, you know, especially on the left side of the line. Like, I mean, it was – it's like a, it, when we use that cliche about men amongst boys, mm-hmm. that's what he looked like. And that's – honestly, he looked like the guy that you said – Oh, that guy should be playing big time college football. Like that's how good he freaking is to me, Jason. He's a guy that he gets here to Texas, gets in the strength and conditioning program, adds a little bit more muscle to him. I don't know how much weight he needs to add, but probably a good 10 to 15, you know, easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can probably get you 20 at most. You don't want to lose any of the speed, but the, but he gets that some of that footwork and, and all that. I mean, he's impressive. He looks like a guy that, a couple of years from now, we're going to be saying, okay, that guy's a stud. And one more guy, one more guy. This has been my last one before we go. He's not, he's, he's not a commit, but Jaden Greathouse, mm-hmm. the receiver from West, like, baller! Jaden! Every year, man. He's been doing it for three years. So, yeah. Jaden, my man! Jaden was so freaking good, so damn impressive. I was so I'm that's looking at his offense. Secondary, he was facing too, man. I mean, that's yes, like- and look, it looks like you know, it looks like um, if I'm looking at the offer list, uh, correct right now, looks like Texas is one of his offers. Uh, Jason, yeah, if I'm correct, yeah. some of the other schools are Arizona State, Arkansas, Baylor, uh, Kansas. That was nice. Uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> 
what'd you do that for, Kansas? Why play yourself like that? <laughs> um, you know, Penn State, uh, SMU, uh, A&M, and, and West Virginia. There's a future cast in uh, for him, 73% for Texas. What can you tell me about Jaden? Because, again, don't get a chance to watch a ton of high school games. And I looked and I was like, who the hell is that? That guy is a beast. Yeah, and like I said, he's been doing it. He does it on the biggest stage, and he does it all the time. What's interesting about Jaden, um, yeah, Rivals has him as a wide receiver. He's number 90 in the country. He's a Rivals 100 guy. A lot of schools have recruited him kind of as a flex tight end. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what Texas has talked to him. I heard Texas was close to getting his commitment back when Tom Herman, those guys were around. There was some connections there. Um, now Texas has to work a little harder, but he did visit UT several times this fall. I mean, listen, he's at Westlake. Texas should have a great shot at Jaden Greathouse. High character kid. Dude, I love everything about Jaden Greathouse. But um, it's funny, like I said, people, a lot of schools are talking to him about being a tight end, a flex tight end. Mm. And people say, okay, is he athletic enough? Is he fast enough to be a pure wide receiver? And I'm like, I don't know, man. But every time I look up, he's running by guys. Right? He's open. He's open. And he, and exactly. some guys, and they, I always say this, some guys are just good football players. Okay. Right. Maybe they're not the tallest. Maybe they're not the fastest. Maybe they don't have all the NFL measurables. Some guys are just damn good football players. Jaden Great, Greathouse is a guy. I don't give a shit where you put him. Take him right. and just, you figure it out later. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah Texas, I think is in a, a good spot there, but he's pretty open. I've talked to Jaden a few times this fall. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely not a slam dunk by mm-hmm. any means, but uh, you know, Texas signing a couple of Westlake kids um, in this 2022 class, you would think would help in with Jaden Greathouse next year. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see where that one goes, but you're right, man. Almar, he does it every year on, on the biggest stage. He's always on top of his game. Just a really good football player. Yeah, really good. I really liked him a lot. So again, shout out to Westlake. Congratulations on another uh, state championship. Hey, Real quick, 30 seconds. Uh, Liberty Hill uh, made it to the uh, to the championship game. Uh, they lost. How good of a program are they, Jason? I'm not that familiar with Liberty Hill. Is that is that a, a normal thing for them, or was this kind of a, a really great season for them? No, they went to the state championship last year or state semifinals okay. last year. They're a good program. Okay. Historically, they were really good, you know, whatever, 10, 15 years ago. Um, they run that funky kind of wishbone offense, so it's you don't see a lot of that. But, yeah, they had a nice run this year. And Liberty Hill, in fact, uh, knocked out Rouse, where my kids go to school. Um, mm-hmm. And Rouse had a really good season. But yeah, they, they came up oh so close. But, yeah, they're, they've they been really good for the last last couple of years. They've been really good. Shout out to the uh, the Austin area teams that made it. My Cedar Park Wolves, well, <laughs> we made the playoffs. And so we'll we'll get back there one day. My kids are coming in about another 10 years. You, got, <laughs> you guys just hold on. So, Jason, thank you. I know you got stuff to do. I appreciate you guys tuning in again one more thing if you've been able to make it this far please like subscribe we'll have videos all throughout the week we'll have the modcast on thursday we may do that thing again live catch will be back at some point uh i'm going to try to be as fast as I, I as i can be get some rogue pocket theory for yourselves because the holidays are coming jason thank you so much you guys take care we'll talk soon peace out